<laughs> All right, guys, we're live now. Okay. So we're live. So we want to welcome everybody that's listening, all eight people that are listening. Now we have a little <laughs> bit more. Um, we're going to be talking about tourism and real estate, uh, how the pandemic has affected, and we're just going to keep it as positive as possible, but informative also. So uh, we, I have invited experts in the field, local experts. So first here we have Chris uh, Rick and Chris Nichols, owners and managing partners at Crazy Ed Satisfied Frog. We also have Kyle Wood, uh, broker owner from Sonora Realty. And Russ Black. Everybody knows Russ Black from Peñasco Recreation. So let's start with uh, here, Rick and Chris. Nikki, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and what you've ha what have you been doing during this pandemic? Well, we're... We're um, owners, managing partners at The Frog, and quite frankly, we've never worked so hard since this whole thing started just to try to keep our you know, heads above water. I mean, basically, we had to change our entire business model on a peso. You know, um, we initially started this business as you know, kind of a destination business. We wanted people to come and enjoy the view and come to the frog and be part of the frog experience. And we had, you know, concerns about, you know, offering delivery um, early on because Crazy Ed, you know, had been telling us, you know, it's it's a a big business to take on that kind of responsibility. It's hard work. So, you know, by creating uh, the website with you and with me and you know, turning our business into an e-commerce site. Um, it's been, it's been bruising, uh, you know, it's been a, a long bruising, um, journey. journey, but you know, the fact that we're doing it, you know, I think is really good. I'm, mean, I think that we're going to see changes ripple all the way, you know, going forward from this in businesses like this is every, every restaurant has got to have some sort of pickup delivery service offered. I don't think you're going to see you know, just destination restaurants very much anymore. There's got to be some component to being able to get out to the people too. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to be able to do. Cool, cool. All right, let's go with Kyle Wood. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Kyle. What you do uh, and what have you been doing? Well, um, surviving. Um, my <laughs> name is Kyle Wood. I'm the broker owner of uh, Playa Sonora Realty along with my partner, Sandy Lopez. Um, been in Penasco for approximately 12 years um, in the real estate market for 10 and um, uh, just trying to keep my agents motivated and keep in front of our clients. So it's been, um, it's, it's been, uh, it's been rough, but I have been through similar uh, issues like this back in, um, 2001 during 9-11 and 2007 through 2010 and, and now, now, now. So uh, it's not totally foreign to me, but now that I'm running a business and having to keep my agents motivated and keep front of our clients, it's a little bit different. So, but I, I, I'm, um, I'm optimistic from what I've seen over the last uh, 51 days or however long we've been in, in quarantine, I'm, I'm very optimistic about uh, moving forward. So, I want to hear a little bit more of how you're uh, motivating your, your, uh, your, <laughs> your, <laughs> your... <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll hear more from you about that, but let's go first with Russ Black. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you have been doing. Okay, so Russ and Naomi have lived here in Penasco now going on 14 years. And we live in the hood. We don't live on the beach. And so, you know, we're right in the neighborhood. Uh, and we decided that we were going to do something a little more um, close to what we were doing in the States. I'm a tour guide here. I do promotions. I do a lot of work with RVers, a lot of work setting up tours for people. Uh, my wife is a seamstress. And in the lockdown, I, I have a note here. We'll talk about it later. But we've been here at home since, I think, the 16th of March but we're super busy doing things. So it's actually really nice for us um, being able to stay home and focus and do things. And yeah, I started building dollhouses because it's something fun to do. 
But uh, yeah, so the promotion and tour business, part of our business is basically just sh shut. Although I will say that February and March of 2021 are already booked 100%. So that's good news. It's mm, really good news. Okay, we already have been receiving a few questions. We'll have William check on the Facebook page for us and record those questions for later date, for later to answer in a bit. Um, right now, let's let's talk about restaurants and bars with, with here with Rick and Chris. So um, what's the current state of restaurants and bars in Rocky Point in general? Well, uh, I mean, as everyone knows, we're in the kind of phased role in uh, businesses opening up again. So you know, we're looking at um, middle of our uh, by f or June 1st through the 15th before we can even operate at 40% inside the restaurant. And that's without, you know, the tourists coming down. So, you know, mid June is when supposedly everything, you know, will open back up and then we'll have to all have um, health certificates, clearing all the staff that, you know, they, they're they um, virus free and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different um, sanitation, health, sanitation um, policies and procedures, which we're already following. We just haven't, you know, no one's done the health tests yet. So um, we'll be doing that um, as soon as, you know, as soon as we can. Um, it's just been, you know, we're just trying to get everything together for when they do come back um, and focus right now on delivering a quality uh, product um, by pickup or by delivery. Um, and that's, you know, that's where we are. Okay. It's, 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 a, it's a, you know, for, and I talked with the several other restaurants I've been talking with, um, with um, uh, Shayla over at Manny's and, and uh, Jose Boo over at Boo, Boo Bar and Max you know, John McBride of Max's and um, John over at um, Capone's. Yeah, Mike and, and Mike. Cindy over at um, Latitude, Latitude 31. And there's a varying degrees of, you know, um, this is, the, you know, devastating to, yeah, it's hard. It's going to be difficult to get through, but I think that we can get through. Um, the bottom line here in, in, in Penasco is that there's always going to be restaurants. Yes, and always going to be bars. And there's always going to be, you know, some quality places in town. And either you make it to this next, to this third phase, or you get out completely, or you come back and reinvent yourself as something totally different. Right. So, I mean, those are kind of the options that we look at um, when looking at, you know, where are we going to be? And for a lot of us, it's really uncertain. Um, you know, we just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, before we continue, we just want to say hi to some of uh, our viewers that are saying hi to all of you guys. Julie Echeverry, Jamie Mason, Jared, and Lauren. Um, constant posters of the Peñasco fans and community group. <laughs> anyway, um, let us continue. Uh, let's talk about the real estate uh, section of things. Uh, what's the current state of real estate for Peñasco, Kyle? Uh, thanks, for, here? thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, Two things. Our rental business obviously just dropped off a cliff. Um, people, renters, tourism starts to book for March and April, uh, you know, a year, six months in advance. And when the COVID um, issue came up, uh, we immediately started getting cancellations. Um, and then they... Uh, then they enacted the lockdown and then everything would, went in the tank. Um, so it w it's been very, very disruptive and I do not see uh, it recovering for this summer. I would hope it does, but um, I think until there's some visibility as to um, contagion and, uh, and uh, uh, people feeling safe uh, to come down again. Um, I think it's probably going to be August, September, and then we're you know, down into the slow season. So um, I've heard some talk that 
they may try to open up the, the city by mid mid June. Uh, if that happens, then then we'll take another look. Um, as far as the real estate side goes, I had really expected um, inquiries, prospects from uh, our lead generation on our website to, to also drop off a cliff. I, I thought that that was gonna happen. Um, that did not, uh, to my surprise. Um, I have not seen any decline in lead generation or interest. Um, it's been actually positive uh, from, from our aspect. People are still inquiring about homes. Um, they wanna get down here. They wanna know when they can come down. Are the beaches open? So there, there is a real interest. And, and like I said at the beginning, I, I'm, I'm very confident that um, uh, at least from the sales side, uh, people buying uh, real estate, I, I'm very confident that uh, um, it's, 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 gonna, it's gonna pick up. Uh, you have to understand a lot, of our, a, lot of our trend, a lot of our communication with the clients right now uh, is through our, uh, through our internet lead generation, through uh, our webcast that we do, uh, goes out to all of our 1,500, 2,000 uh, prospects that we have. And, and uh, there's still interest there. We try to keep them up to date. Um, and the feedback that we get, um, I, I, did not ex I did not expect to get at, at this point in time. Um, so moving forward, uh, you know, I think, I think there's, uh, there's good things on the horizon. It's just a matter of the unknown right now. We need to see some visibility as to where the government's going to go, what happens in the United States, um, what happens down here in Penasco. So I, I'm, I'm very optimistic, uh, moving forward. As a matter of fact, we had, uh, uh, two, uh, executed contracts uh, within the last two weeks, sight unseen. So um, uh, I'm very, except, you know, they see the photos. So I'm, I'm very confident in, in, in where we're at. If I see that now, uh, you, you know, usually from, from our point of view, I can expect maybe four transactions, five transactions a month with our small team. And uh, uh, um, we've had two this just this last week. So I'm, I'm confident it's, it's a struggle, but uh, I'm confident that, that things are going to improve. Can I ask Kyle a quick question here? Yeah, go for it. Hey, Kyle, do you think that um, we're going to see a dramatic drop in real estate prices that will help bring people back into the real estate market here? As buyers? As buyers. That, that, that's a very good question. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the interest that I've received and the three contracts I've, I've written myself, um, they were all somewhat low ball offers. And uh, you never know the way a, a seller is going to react. Um, obviously, if, if I were representing a seller, I would want to get as much as, as I can for that client. But the reality is, is you don't know what that seller's motivation is. Um, there could be concern on uh, of the COVID virus. Uh, there's a dry up in rentals. Like they, you know, they're counting on that revenue to pay their rent, uh, to pay their either their seller carry back or their HOA. You don't know what their motivation is. And so, you know, the buyers, they come in and they, they are going to uh, submit um, uh, uh, lo lower offers than what they usually would, which, you know, it, from a buyer side, it's justifiable. Um, and, and, and you do have those buyers that is going to, uh, you do have those accepted offers that is going to drive the price down, uh, uh, in, in those type of situations. So to answer your question directly, would there be a, is there going, do I foresee a drop in valuation? Um, I can tell you from the last two transactions that I've had. Yeah. They've, they, they are certainly below what the, the going comps are right now. Um, I think once we see visibility on, on where, where we're going to be in two months, uh, that may change. Okay. So may I ask Kyle a question, please? Yeah. Go for it. So Kyle, that was an excellent, um, answer for buyers. 
let's turn the coin. It, your sellers that you have right now currently in the market and they're wanting to sell, what would be the best advice you would give them right now? Uh, that is a good question. And you're going to get different opinions on different agents that, that, that you, that you, um, that you ask. Um, but I value yours. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, as I value your food, by the way. Um, <laughs> so that, that question, that, that question, Kyle, <laughs> Yeah, let's let's leave it for the end because that's okay. one of the questions we're gonna we're gonna have here at oh, the okay. end. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, let's do, get to Russ. Like food, by the way, <laughs> let's get to Russ because we haven't given any time to Russ. So let's yeah, talk right. a little bit about Russ. I don't, I don't need. I, I'll defer my time to whoever else wants it. No, I'm <laughs> oh Russ, I want to know about what's going on with you. <laughs> so you know the the majority of my business from October until June is generated by tourism, not unlike everybody else's here. Right. But I don't have inventory in food like Rick and Chrissy do. And I don't have overhead to sell properties like you do. I, my wife and I live very, very, um, we live on the first step of an eight step ladder. So when things go bad, we don't fall very far. So <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're able to. Um, Russ and ladder is not a good combo. No, it's not. Yeah, That's that is cool. funny. It's been a year and a month since I fell off my ladder, but, I, but I'm better now. Um, and I don't get on ladders anymore. I, only one step. But um, the thing is, is that you have to be able to be flexible in this system that we live in. Um, when things are going really good and they're overheated and everybody's making money and everybody's busy, we lose, sometimes we lose our, our way in what's important. And so we really got to stay focused on that because sometimes the ladder is going to fall over. Like what happened to us on March 16th, our ladder fell completely over completely. And, and so we, we have to adjust. Um, one of the things, I mean, regarding tourism, you know, next month we were supposed to have Circus Mexicus. Uh, that was going to be on June 4th through 7th. That brings over 5,000 people to town. It brings millions of dollars of revenue to the town. And for them to have to cancel it meant a lot to them. And that's part of tourism. I had a boat packed with 126 people on Friday because of that, because of that concert. And so the flexibility of it is, so the RCPM organization had to move their, they're not moving the Circus Mexicus, but they're, they're going to set up two more concerts in September, one in September and one in November to kind of make up for that. And the people that were booked with me, in June are already booked with me in September. So there's flexibility on everybody's part. We know that we know what we have to do. And there's a lot of speculation about, you know, there's a lot of negativity out there about what's going on. But my point of view is, is that we have to do what we have to do under the government that we live under. And so we're, we're okay to do that. And we will be flexible and we will, we will, change the way we do things for the new reality, whatever that's going to be. Nobody knows what that's going to be right now. So we're already, like I said earlier, we're, we're already booking our trips for uh, February and March. Uh, they're already sold out for, for RV caravans coming into Mexico. Um, January and April already have some interest for city tours and things to do around town. So I know like, like what you were talking about, Kyle, with the, with the real estate, there is interest out there. And what you guys are talking about at the restaurant, ex expanding what you do to kind of face these challenges as we move forward, it's fantastic. It, it's almost, it, to me, and this is going to sound glib to some people, but it's almost like a reset button. Like It is, it is a reset we, button. We got, maybe we got too comfortable and this, and the computer had to be shut off and turned back on. But I know all of these people on the screen, and I know a lot of the people that are watching, and we can do this. That's absolutely for sure. We can do it. And uh, not to be polit not to be political, but the shutdown the shutdown is difficult. But I know that these people here that are that are running the city are, I believe, they're doing the very best that they can under the situation, which has never been presented to them before. Yeah. So. Agreed. Am I in a hurry for tourism to come back? Yeah, I, I am. But I'm in a really, really um, tough situation because I don't want any sick people coming down here. <laughs> you know, that's that's an important thing to me. 
yeah. you know, we, we, we don't want anybody else getting sick in Penasco from people coming from other places. And that's why the, the strict lockdown policy that we have, I think it feels bad, but it's might be the right thing. We're going to get a little bit into the effects of these restrictions. Kyle, you had a question. Sorry. Well, I had a question for Russ. Uh, Russ, what, what uh, within the immediate term, let's say out till September, what, what have you seen in terms of interest uh, in in coming down or, or reservations? Is it pretty much on hold or what, everything? What, what everything is on hold. Everything. Everything is on hold. I mean, I can only be as far as reservations go. I can be centric to the Circus Mexicus crowd because I deal directly with them and they're 100% in. As soon as they can get back down here, they're they're in. So other than that, the general general public, general tourism that I'm not really con contacted with, I don't really I don't know that much about what's going on out there, but I know that the people that I'm dealing with right now, there's close to about 3,000 people that I'm dealing with and they're in, very interested. Well, most of them I'm not gonna say most of them. Some of them have already booked their rooms for September. Even though September is a hot month here, they're itching to get down here. And we're itching to show them a good time. You know? That's hey, before a feeling I that's a sorry? feeling I'm getting as as well. They're itching to get down here, but there there needs to be some visibility on on on, on where the city's going on this. And before we continue, we just want to say hi to uh Donia Arrow. Aaron and George are saying a lot of people saying hi, but the comments are just uh, going too fast for me. Um, <laughs> pick all right, one and stick with it. pick one and stick with it. All right, uh, so hi to everybody. Um, effects of this the town restrictions. There's restrictions coming in. There's restrictions in town. There's a uh, 10 p.m. horn going off. How is this affecting every sector? Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with real estate, Kyle. How is this affecting? Oh my word! How is it affecting? <laughs> um, well, obviously, no uh, clients are coming down to take a look at at homes. Uh, believe it or not, do, we do sell a homes uh, sight unseen. A lot of that has to do with our uh, virtual tours that uh, our host uh, uh, Manny uh, uh, provides uh, the the infrastructure for that. And we we hire his services to do our virtual tours, so those are online. Um, and so that gives the client a, um, uh, a very good uh, perspective on what, what the homes look like. Um, and we communicate with our, our clients, keeping them up to date with our webcasts. Uh, that, those go out once a week. Uh, and, and then the uh, drone videos. So they get a good sense of what, what the property looks like without actually having to come down. Now, from a personal um, uh, from a personal standpoint, um, uh, you know, I, I, we live down here full time. Um, I'm down here with my seven year old daughter. Uh, she is homeschooling now from, uh, uh, from the house. Um, she knows zoom probably better, better than I do now. She knows how to log in and use the <laughs> passwords and get to each class. But my wife still has a full time job up in Phoenix and she comes down, used to come down on the weekends. Um, she came down just prior to the uh, closure of the city and she was down here for 51 days or so. And finally she said, you know, I got to go back to Phoenix. She's not going to be able to come down until this, they reopen the city. Um, I've been wanting to get up for Mother's Day and, and uh, I don't want to leave the business. I don't want to leave, uh, you know, the animals, the dogs, the cats, uh, you know. So from a personal perspective, it's been uh, it's been hard. And lastly, um, my office manager has been stuck in Hermosillo. Uh, she went there for uh, a doctor's appointment for her daughter uh, and um, uh, she got out, stuck outside the city. So um, she's, she's intently waiting, patiently waiting to get back in and get back into the office and get back working. So um, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to uh, keep some of our employees on payroll uh, and that's my commitment to uh, the community. Um, so from, from that aspect, it's, it's, it's uh, been difficult on one side, but yet to, uh, as, as uh, uh, Christy and Rick say, it's, um, 
you, you make a little bit of changes to your, your business and how to cope with your business. And, and we, luckily enough, I, I, fortuitively enough, I like to say I was fortuitous in it. Uh, you know, a year, two years ago, we implemented our, 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 our video webcasting to communicate directly with clients via video. And, and that has uh, really saved us uh, uh, during this, uh, these hard times. Okay, let's, uh, let's go here with Rick and Chris. Now, Rick and Chris did a really awesome job in putting together some interviews from every restaurant I can, restaurant I can think of here in Penasco. So the question goes for you, if you want to include some of this information, you got uh, feedback from them. Effects on, uh, on the restrictions of the town in your restaurant and bars. Okay, um, and, and Manny, you said that you're probably going to make the um, questions and the answers from the other bar owners. If I have your on... permission, I'll, I'll post yes. them live. Um, yes. Okay. Because so, I'm sure that, um, you know, I want to make sure everyone's voice is heard. Mm -hmm. um, the restrictions obviously are understandable, and we've had to follow them. The initial phases, you know, were, were changing on almost a daily basis. So, you know, we'd go from one day, you know, operating these hours to the next day, you know, having to switch. So no one was really, you know, it was hard to put a, a definitive line out there. Of what are we going to do next? And it's like, we don't know what we're going to do yet next because we're not sure what the city's going to allow us to do next. You know, we've got challenges like, um, can we have two employees in a car? I saw somewhere that, you know, someone was saying that they were taking two employees back, uh, I think it was um, off of uh, Max's post or something, and someone had a citation for, you know, they were going to get charged uh, 2,600 pesos for every employee they had in their car. Yes. Um, so, I mean, and if it's, you know, if that's the law, that's, that's the law, and we understand that, you know, we have to follow that, but, you know, it's, it's difficult to operate, I mean, and to be able to know what's next that we have to do. Um, some of our, you know, Capone said due to, um, uh, fewer customers and local curfew, they shortened their hours from 12 to seven. Um, but the, the not having the, the lack of tur tourism and locals to business in town has been devastating to them. Uh, John McBride over at Max's, um, restrictions, the eight o'clock curfew, one person per car, um, uh, has it made it so that people don't even want to leave their house to come right. to, you know, our businesses. They're afraid to. Um, Mike and Cindy, um, you know, it's just about killed latitude them. Latitude 31. Yeah, Latitude 31. Uh, you know, there are a few people that want to order out, uh, which has helped them make payroll every week. But most people don't um, realize that, you know, we legally have to still pay our employees whether we're, we're making money or not. Um, so, you know, not having the same kind of government help in place um, for our employees and for our businesses that they have in the US, you know, certainly makes it a, a bit harder on us. We're not, we don't have that kind of bailout down here. Um, Ubar, you know, closed um, early on. So maybe, you know, he, maybe he had the right um, business. Jose had the right idea and closing early and, you know, you know, possibly saving some money. So, you know, we all, we all at that point back then kind of said, Okay, are we gonna are we gonna move forward? Uh, if so, how are we gonna do it? Or are we going to shutter and wait until this storm passes? And the the thing about it was is back even before that happened, before the coronavirus happened, is we were already seeing you know a drop off in some of the tourism because of some of the bad press we were getting up in in the states. So add that to the um, pandemic. Pandemic you know, right during our season. Get ready you know, to take off. Yeah, you know, we're that's you know, we're saying, hey, this is starting to look like the best season, you know, in a long time. We're gonna do yeah. really great. We're gonna, you know, our employees are gonna make a lot of money in tips. And then, you know, suddenly yeah. it just the spigot turns off. It's it's been hard. Can yes. I ask a question? Can I yeah. ask a question of, of Rick? Um, do, do you plan on, uh, can, um, with, with the changes and what you've learned, um, do, you, do, you, do you foresee you making any changes to your, your business plan or offering additional services or, or coming up with some new unique ideas? Have, have you discussed that? Or, yeah, and, and we've already, yeah, we've implemented a lot of that. I mean, one of the things that first things that we did was 
um, build that um, e-commerce site so that people had an easier way to order food online, have it delivered, um, pay with their credit cards. Groceries. And then we also added um, grocery delivery, which is what um, several of the um, restaurants in the U.S. are doing. They're adding groceries as part of their delivery um, service, and they're calling them uh, grocerants. Um, so that you know people while they're in quarantine can still you know get the groceries that they need without having to go out right so you know some places may may just have that going on forever you know if that works out for them you know where are we going you know i don't i think it's hard to say for any of us right now unless you've got some very deep pockets and you know you can go a while it i think that um you know the picture is not totally clear yet. And, and for all of us to make it to, you know, mid uh, June, um, we're going to have to suck it up and, and, mm -hmm. and try the best we can. Yeah. Um, if you want to mention your website where you can get for anybody need yes. to get groceries. Yes, you can Thank get you, our Manny. food and, and a very, very good pizzas. They have excellent pizzas. <laughs> and they're our, excellent chicken. On our, on our wonderful yeah. website at satis satisfiedfrogmx.com. And Manny knows that site intimately as his hands are <laughs> back into that. Manny, help us! <laughs> you know, I, you know, I got to tell you, we we found that site very useful. We we ordered from from that new site, and it was very convenient. And I, I think that's, I think all the the businesses are are going to start replicating that that uh, uh, that type of service, that type of way to. Uh, or order, order food online yeah and you know what it's not as easy as you might think it is Ooh, i didn't setting think it was <laughs> a, yeah setting up a delivery service is a lot of moving parts that you know we didn't have to deal with before people would come to us and you know we give them their food and they go on their merry way well now you know the logistics of doing this you know say you've got 35 orders going out to el encanto or Pla playa or choya bay uh, choya bay at the <laughs> same time love you guys <laughs> And, you know, we're trying to figure out who can get there, you know, you know, can we get the food there hot? Can we get it there fresh? Yes. You know, are we making any errors in what's getting out there? You know, logistically, how's that line? How's the food getting from the, from the serve out counter to the car, to the place? And, you know, are people having problems with our payment gateway? And they, there was some problems with that. So, you know, there's a lot of little tiny details that when you change your business model that drastically, that you're going to have some success, but you're also going to have some failures there. And we hope that, you know, our customers at least will know that we are trying to expand our services in a fashion that we should have probably, you know, that would take a little bit longer to roll out than we did, but we just wanted to make sure that we could get food out to them and groceries out to them as soon as possible. Well, so I, know, so I, know I just got... I just got five comments or six comments at the same time raving about your guys' chickens, just to let you know. All right, continue, <laughs> yeah, Russ. Absolutely, Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. No, We're but that's what I... That's what I yeah, order, 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 order. <laughs> but that's what I think is cool about this conversation is that people can now look into what's going on for actual people who live here who are going through this with everybody else. I mean, at differing degrees of pain, but we're all in pain to, you know... But to watch a business take something where you're used to having people come in and sit down and then eat and drink and go their merry way to, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, what do we do now? And so that evolution process, that survival instinct, you guys are killing it that in that in that manner. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing because it would be so easy just to shut down and say, well, I guess we'll just shut it down and wait and then maybe not reopen or, you know, who knows? Well, you know, I, th I think, I think a, a, a big part of it is to, uh, obviously you have a business to run and you want it to be successful, but you also do feel obligated and you Thank really you. want to employ, keep employing your, your employees and you do everything that you can to, to finish that. Hey, hey Rick, I'm getting a quick question here. It says, you mentioned that there was a drop in visitors before the coronavirus. Could you explain the reason? Um, I think, at least from our perspective, we were seeing some drop in visitors because people weren't coming down after the 
newscast in uh, Arizona on the, you know, the cartel problems, even though that, you know, it may happen not even close to 600 us. miles from here, you know, oh, we yeah, still yeah. took all the things I forgot yeah. about that. So, you know, yeah. We, and, you know, they're getting pounded daily up there, you know, from, you know, the, the media saying, um, Hey, you know, it's dangerous to go to Mexico, dangerous, you know, here's, here's proof A, here's proof B. And so we were seeing, you know, even family members that weren't coming down and we're right. saying, Hey, look, you know, we're not, close to that or you know this kind of stuff feels here than i do anywhere in phoenix not only from a you know crane standpoint but uh the coronavirus standpoint i mean Absolutely. look at the numbers that we have up here where we have here so we're in a nice protected bubble but you know let's come back to why we're seeing a dip i think it really had a lot to do with the negative media and me coming you know 30 years and tv news you know, I know when people are spinning things and they were spinning plates like crazy. So now that we're in this subject, um, Linnell Hughes also asked, please let me know when tourists are allowed to come back to Rocky Point. So we're listening to William here. He, he's uh, he's uh, helping us with technical issues. Can you repeat that question there, William? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, Linnell Hughes asked, please let me know when tourists are allowed to come back to Rocky I am so ready to drive people to Rocky Point with my sh show service. <laughs> well, the, the uh, basic plan, um, I mean, it's going to happen in three phases. The third phase probably is the one that you're talking about, um, which is that's when we uh, have full um, reopening of economic activities, which includes, you know, bringing people tourism come, back, bringing tourism back. That doesn't happen until mid-June if all the criteria for phase one and phase two are met. If there's one case of the virus, the phases don't move forward. Right. So or they may go back. We have to be realistic. Rush, you you've got you've got probably the bill on that too. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you hear the you hear the date of mid-June, and I think that's a best case scenario, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. Um okay. You know, I, I watched I watched the mayor the other day on his on his hour and a half long broadcast, and and he did a really good job on it, and he didn't really nail down any dates, and and then the the the, the language is put in there as long as phase one and phase two of the recovery go as planned, then it looks like mid June might be the time, but that's the perfect world scenario according to the way he had it laid out, which which is. Um, for a lot of people, difficult to understand. But for us, I'm, I, I don't have COVID-19 and I don't want it. And, and my neighbors don't want it, you know? And, and, and you, don't want your, you, you don't want your tourists to have it. And right, so, so I want my business to be back. There. I want my business to be back 120% next year, totally clean, you know? And I think that I, I, saw, I saw something on TV today and this is just a funny thing, and it'll be short. Don't worry, I'm, I can be really long-winded. <laughs> a guy says, "A guy says, um, going through what we're going through right now is like having a scab on your face." And your mom always told you to never pick your scabs; let it heal, because the scab is the healing part of the of the injury, right? The thing is, is that as people, we want to we want to pick at it. And then we pull the top layer off and it starts bleeding again. We got to start all over. I don't want to start all over. I thought it was a really good word picture. I mean, obviously, because I remembered it. That was at eight o'clock this morning. So, <laughs> so, so am I in a hurry to start making some money again? Yeah. Do I want to risk getting sick when I'm 60 years old? No. So, mm -hmm. So I mean, we have, there's a balancing act, and and you know I, I I'm all about tourism, I'm all about promotion, and I will continue to do that because we have one of the best places in the world to live, as far as I'm concerned. And we've been down here a long time, and we love our people here. I mean, the community pulled together and they're doing great things out there for for people that are really economically challenged. I don't like the word poor because they're not poor in a lot of ways, but they're economically challenged. And they're, and they're doing really, really good things right now. So their business models also changed to adapt to a new 
a new reality. And so we're gonna, to... we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the, the website too that okay. um, you wanna promote. Uh, before we get into that, we wanna thank, it was Linnell. Hi Linnell, thank, Hi, you, for Linnell. That, for, thank you for that question. And the answer is we have no. a tentative date. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. We have an idea. Um, Russ, yes. effects of the restrictions on tourism in general. I, I know we've gone through through it a little bit. Just quick answer. Zero. There's, I mean, a, no, 100% effect, negative. Mm -hmm. Zero tourism. Zero. Nothing. I mean, zero. The The only difference is, is that the, the, the people that want to come down starting in October, I mean, I've got tours actually starting in October, as long as we can open up. Um, I've got, I've got a group of 20 people that we're leaving here and going down to Guanajuato and down to San Miguel de Ende. And we're, you know, we're going to be doing some stuff in October as long as we can, but the request for information outweighs the actual reservations coming in. So Mary Snyder's telling us here that the federal government phases just got posted on Rocky point 360. Mm -hmm. um, I see there there are a few dates here. Uh, maybe we'll go through them right now. But um, just the uh, the final question, I guess, uh, for for uh, everybody is, uh, what do you see in the future? What do you see in the future, Rick and Chris, for Penasco when it comes to restaurant the restaurant business and bars? Well, for the city as a whole, I think it's you know, it'll recover. It, it'll recover. It's going to take mm -hmm. some time. I mean. Um, some businesses are going to go under. Um, yes. That's very unfortunate. Some are going to um, be able to survive and may come out okay. But I mean, any resources that they had in the bank is more than likely gone by now. Right. Um, and then other businesses, you know, will do just fine. I mean, um, um, Chef Mickey, you know, he's, he says, you know, He's looking forward to coming back and, you know. Um, John Capone's, yeah, he's looking forward to his, you know, hopefully opening his brewery soon so that he can bring that back to life. New brewery. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of opportunities. And then there's also, you know, the realities for the businesses that do have to close. Do I have enough money to close? <laughs> I mean, because it takes money to close. You just don't, you can't just shut your doors. That's right. Not you've got to, you've got to, you know. Finiquito. And you've got the finiquito taxes and, and taxes and, you know. So do you try to just hang on long enough and trickle the work so that you can afford to close or do you <laughs> keep digging yourself in deeper or do you have a, you know, a, another model in place or, you know, do you have the base clients that will carry you through and, and, and bring you to the other side of this? And it's going to be different for each business. I think that, you know, there's, you know, Chef Luca uh, over at Panavino, you know, did a great thing with um, have the um, food to go at CS Grocery. So he's got right. you know, a refrigerator right there with, you know, um, his entrees loaded in there. Yeah. And I think uh, Chef Tony also has his in over there. So, you know, everyone's trying different things, uh, right. which is great. And we're going to see a lot more innovation down here. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to pull up the website. I'm going to share my screen with everybody right here. Um, in Rocky Point 360, Chandra has really, really uh, good information that uh, talking about phase one estimated from May 18th to May 31st. Do you think this is a good estimation? Uh, what's everybody's opinion on this? I mean, this is the, uh, this is the information that we have. It's, mm -hmm. it's what we have to work with um, until that changes. You know, I, I think, you know, she did a, you know, Rocky Point 360 always does a good job of getting information out there. Outstanding. Um, and what's nice about this is that, you know, it's it's distilled. It's in a, you know, form that's very easily digested by, you know, any of the businesses down here. Um, but well, as far know, as I, is, I, the date, is the date accurate? I don't Yeah, know. we don't know. I, I think you know, I think, uh, you know, the, the state of Sonora I had a meeting with all the uh, presidents, the mayors of, of uh, the towns. And I think this is a uh, the result of their conversations based on the unique situation of each community. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I answered this question on a forum the other day, and it's like I, I wouldn't want to have the responsibility 
that these people have right now. They have a responsibility that's balanced like between economic development and safety of citizens. And then some people are gonna really love what you're doing and some people are gonna really hate what you're doing and they're gonna try to politicize it. And I would hate to have to make those decisions. So I, I applaud them for what they have to do. You know, they're not coming up with, they're not coming up with this plan willy nilly. It's thought out. Yeah, so I, we're, I, we're going to do our we're going to do our part and we're going to be part of it. That's I, I absolutely agree. And I've said this from the beginning. This this town has has limited resources when it comes to health care. And uh, if we saw an outbreak here, uh, it could be months. It could be a year uh, before uh, businesses get get back to uh, an, uh, an essential a normal. And, and like you said, Russ, we don't want to have to start this all over again. So, right. um, and, and I, I, am, I have to applaud not only the, the city and the mayor, but all of the residents for uh, uh, following the lead of the mayor and the guidelines and, and uh, let's just get this over and, and, and move forward and try to get back to some sense of normalcy. Yes. Rocky Point 360 just posted some more links that everybody can uh, go read. Uh, for for all that's what she what she says that the phases you're looking at is the proposal locally, and the other note recently posted is, and she gave the link: Mexico plans transition to new normal. Okay, so the the final question for for Russ. Yeah. The future of tourism for Rocky Point. Where do you see it's going to be off? It's going, it's going to be off the hook. It's going to be off the hook, and, and I and I say that with my whole cheerleader outfit on, <laughs> because and the reason and the reason why is because people, I, if I was stuck in Phoenix, and I, no no offense to anybody in Phoenix, but if I was stuck in Phoenix or Tucson or Flagstaff, and I've been wanting to get down to the beach since April. I had to cancel my trips. I had to cancel my condo or hotel room. I don't get to go out and see my friends at JJ's or Boobar or Frog. I don't get to do any of those things. That's that's withdrawal called Mexicosis that Roger Klein has a song about. I mean, that's like I'm having withdrawals. So that energy is pent up. It's completely balled up. And when there's an opportunity for these people to move south for a couple of days, they're going to do it. And they're going to do it with abandon. Like it's going to be, I, I believe it's going to be pretty much off the hook once we get to open up again. And I since mean, we have you in the focus, Russ, um, since we have you here in, in the focus of the video, you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about Steps of Love? Yeah. yeah. So a, a friend of ours, Kathleen Duncan, we've, we've known her for a couple of years and they have a business up in the States. And she started a school program down here called AIM and also Steps of Love. And it was to educate kids um, that were that were in the poorer neighborhoods, or that they had families that were kind of affected, you know, by by familial struggles. And so she had these schools. She started out with like 150 students. Now she has like over 500 students. And so they have this whole thing scaled up for these years to educate people, educate kids. And we've gotten to know a lot of the kids, and it's super cool. Well, when this hit the education aspect of their of their model shut down completely and they went into feeding model so they have a kitchen that's producing i believe it's close to enough food for a thousand families a week wow that, that they converted their kitchen into a what's called a dispensa a dispensa production area and so they've collected quite a bit of money like if i throw the numbers out there she's totally transparent I'm sharing here the website so everybody can see. You got you got the website there. I got the website, and they have the numbers right here. Yeah, so so you want to go there. So this is the number. So they raised one hundred eight thousand dollars since this thing started. They want to raise one hundred forty thousand. Right now, they have enough money to go through the first week of June, and then they're broke. But they go out into every single neighborhood, and wherever there's a red flag or a red handkerchief out on the fence they locate those people and they vet them and then they start giving them the dispenses that they need to survive. 
And it's just a fantastic, fantastic organization. Um, Kathleen is just, she's 100% in. She to all our, view, to all our viewers, to the, we, the website, no, to all our viewers, the website is right uh, above the posting of this video. If you cannot don donate, please share the link to everybody you can. Right. So, so if, you go to, if you go to stepsoflove.org and go to the COVID-19 Crisis Relief Fund tab, if you give a buck, that does something. Each bag that they make for a family of four, this is, and this is something that blows some people's minds away. Each bag that they make for a family of four to last a week costs less than $12. Oh, so a dollar toward that helps. And right now that just, just two days ago, they started doing their water delivery system. So they have four trucks on the road. They spend about $80 a day in gasoline to deliver fresh drinkable water to the poorest of our poor people here in Penasco, like the neighborhoods that most tourists never get to so it's they're they're doing an amazing job now they're not the only one in town either right you know but yeah. that's the one that that has my ear right now so they're, just, they're an absolutely wonderful organization then you've yeah. got other places in town stepping up too like max is i don't know max how many sandwiches that yes. they're delivering a day you know uh, 150 or more. Oh, so many. And um, then uh, Chef Mickey's been out. Chef Mickey, yeah. Cooking. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of, that's what one of the things that we really love about this community is, you know, people come together to help other people. And it's just a beautiful thing that you don't see this kind of tightness um, in some of the communities up there. Well, what I, what I love the other day, I saw something from Chef Mickey. They delivered food to the sanitary fence north of Penasco, the checkpoint. So the soldiers and the military that are out there doing their job, they delivered food to them the other day. And, mm -hmm. and I just I just love that. And then Martin Martinez is in there too. Um, Tony Ballesteros, my friend, the photographer, mm -hmm. he's going around with these guys taking pictures of everything. So, and, and what Rick said, everybody's pulling together and they're doing things that's completely out of their wheelhouse. This is not something that they ever expected to do. And it's not that anybody had to ask them. They just do it. They see the need. I and that's they do a, it. That, that so is I love a, a true indication of, of the spirit of, of this community. And I think that's why we're all down here. I agree with you. Hey, I have somebody asked me a question on uh, on a forum. Are you gonna do some questions today, Manny? Let me just ask uh, uh, Kyle. The last question, uh, and then we can get into the question area. Yeah. Uh, okay. What future can you see for real estate for Pinasco? Future, positive. That's why I am down here. I, uh, I not only am I uh, obviously in the business to um, um, you know sell real estate, but I also believe that it is a family destination. That's why I'm down here. That's why I brought my kids down here. That's why I wanted to raise my, my, my daughters down here. Um, I, I believe that there is uh, uh, I think Kyle, are we connected? He froze. He froze? He froze. All right. Don't he froze. freeze. It's okay. Um, he'll, he'll be back right now, I'm pretty sure. Um, Okay, so William, let's uh, while Kyle comes back, let's read one of the questions that uh, we were asked. Yes, okay, so uh, this one is a really interesting one. It's from Diane Bandusky. Uh, it says, we own a property in Penasco, have not been able to check on our home for two months. Has there been any upswing and break-ins or have the police kept things under control during all this? I don't know. <laughs> you know I'd like um, to say something about that since Kyle's not on. Yeah. Because of the strict criteria of the quarantine, normally I would say I'd be concerned. But because mm -hmm. of the quarantine, I think the security of all the different communities, except for in town, I can't speak of, but the different communities like Los Conscious or Playa Encanto or sure. Sandy Beach or so on, um, have done a great job on okay. policing all the areas and keeping people they see someone wandering around they question them so i think they're probably in a good place right now just because of that 
Yeah, so to, to tag on to that, just so, so people know, this is not a lockdown like what they went through up in the States. This is nope. a lockdown like you can't believe. Okay, so I live in town on a dirt street, and there's a little grocery store two blocks away from my house, and it's customary for my wife and I to walk to our grocery store, get a couple of things, and walk home. That's what we do. We can't walk together to go to the store. True. Unless we're 10 feet apart. Otherwise, we will raise suspicion from the police who are patrolling all of the little neighborhoods. Constantly. So it's constantly. Like they're out there everywhere. You can't walk two people at a time. So if you're walking around with intent to do something bad, you're probably going to get nabbed, to be honest. Yep. Um, let's go to the, another question, William. Well, Kyle's back. Okay. Kyle? I could read another one. Oh, um, you want to let him in? back yet. Oh, I, there I, he I is. Let... Kyle. Oh. Hey, welcome back. So nice. let, let's, uh, let's, uh, repeat the question for Kyle. Maybe he can give us yeah. a little bit more information. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'll okay. pick up on. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, pick, go no, ahead. Pick, pick, pick I, up I, where you were. You guys moved down without me. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I, All right. I've already said, I, I'm too winded. Go ahead. <laughs> Go for it, William. <laughs> All right. So basically, uh, someone was just asking if there has been any um, upswing in break-ins here in Piasco, um, or is there is the police taking good control over all this? And that's Next question. That's the ball <laughs> answered. I, I don't have any information on that. Okay. All right. Next, we'll go to the next question, William. All right, so uh, let's see. It's from. Um, well, you get to that. Mary here. Snyder just said somebody no, can order said. ten chicken dinners from Satisfied Frog, and they can deliver to Steps of Love workers. Helps the restaurants and hardworking crew. So if anybody Beautiful. wants to do that, yeah. Beautiful. go for it. <laughs> William, Satisfied sorry for interrupting you. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> well, Melissa Bianchi says I'm concerned about the local workers any help going their way they make so little money like the beach workers and restaurant workers yes well i happen to know of a group that's on sandy beach a lot of the owners that are in the pravada were making so many sandwiches and they were taking them to the workers and the people um, of this group trying to make sure that they had some food um, and I, like Russ said earlier, there are so many groups that are reaching out to the people that have zero income. Example, um, the very second, the second week of the lockdown, we had a gentleman, I'll say Brett, I won't say your last name. He came into the frog and you know what he did? He bought gift certificates for servers, servers that had no longer had an income and he started so other they restaurants, yeah. uh, the other restaurants and they for, so they can come in and get a fried chicken dinner for their families i thought that was so cool i mean it's just an example of people reaching out to others they don't even know well and then yeah. when we look at our own employees you know it's been tough on them uh, and it's been tough on us you know making making the decisions that we've had to you know we've had to cut back hours we had to you know do things that we just don't want to do and that's why we put up on our website a donation area that um, people can donate directly to our staff because they're not getting the tips that they used to. You know, they're not getting the base. You know, we used to provide probably the best base pay of most of the restaurants in town to our servers. And they're not getting that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're trying that our goal is to break even. And that means, you know, we've got to we've got to we've got to take care of ourselves while we try to take care of our employees and we keep the employees at the forefront of our mind all the time okay we got robert de stefano says i'm planning a fourth of july weekend trip there do you think this will be possible I could, we could say yes, but the truth is we really do not know. It just depends on too many, too many factors going on right now. If, if, um, if, it, if, if I were proposed, if I were asked to uh, schedule for 
for that time frame, I, I would have to respectfully decline because um, it's too soon. It's too soon. Agreed. Agreed. All right, so I have another question, but it's from uh, Danya Stoenert. It says, Cancun is taking reservations for June. Is that when we think that the beaches may open? The, the, beach is, the beach is opening is not a Puerto Penasco thing. It's a federal decision. So when the federal government decides that they're going to open the beaches, that's when they open them. I mean, okay, so, so going back to that, how come the beaches aren't open? We could go out and we could get fresh air. And, you know, that, that question comes up all the time. And somebody in town uh, the other day answered the question from a Mexican's perspective because there are definitely two perspectives. There's, I want to go to my condo and I want to go to the beach. That's what I want to do. It's stupid that the beaches aren't open. Let's think about that. If, if 500 people were able to go down and go sit on the beach, then there's going to be beach vendors on the beach at the same time because they want to sell their stuff because they're desperate. There's right. absolutely no way there can be social distancing in that scenario. And that is one of the main reasons why the beaches have been closed in the entire Republic of Mexico is to keep that distance from local and travelers. So we have to get, I, this is going to sound horrible. We can't be selfish right now. No. Our, our, what we want, we've all explained here what we want. We want our business to be back. We want things to be back to as normal as it can be. We, we want the crowds to come back. But for me and for Rick and Chrissy and for Kyle and for Manny, we're not going to risk picking that thing off our face again. Like there's just, there's just, for me, no way, no way. I'm just, it's, it's a no deal. So we, we, we have to be, we have to be humble. We have to be patient and, and wait this thing out. One thing that, that you know, we all think about is that this is a tourist destination and, and we have people from all over the United States, Mexico, Canada, and who knows, you know, who's bringing what into the town. Uh, that is the, the, the real meat of the issues that, the, the, that we're all dealing with here. We, we do not... Like, like Russ said, you, you have, uh, you know, tourist population coming down to the beach. You don't know where they're from. You don't know if they're carrying the virus, which could be asymptomatic. Uh, symptomatic. And next thing you know, everybody's uh, acquiring the, the virus. So right. um, it, it's, it's, a, it's smart and uh, uh, it's, it, it's, it's the, the most logical course to take in my opinion and it's important to point out that we don't have the facilities for if there's Absolutely. a major outbreak um mm -hmm. people are really going to suffer we don't have the facilities to to uh, mm -hmm. to take care of them all yeah that was one of the questions that somebody posed on monday during the during uh, kiko munro's address to the city was well phoenix is going to open up so, so Pinasco should open up, and he and he clearly said, and, and he goes, we, if we had two hundred people go to the hospital here, it would be inundated. And like we can't, we we don't have the facilities that Phoenix or Tucson has. And, we and, don't. And, and the, so there's no reason the, to make people sick. And, and the thing is, is that who of those that do get sick, who is going to be the most impacted? And that, that is going to be those individuals that don't have the resources to That's get correct. the necessary treatment or to leave and go to Phoenix or go, or go to the States to get treatment. Right. So I know this has already been uh, mentioned, but just to recap, Lauren Knapp asked, we are permanent residents that have been quarantined in Arizona. Our only home is in Las Conchas. We had to check on our 87 year old parents. Any idea if permanent residents will be allowed in earlier? That's a recurring question and there's no answer. I mean, it goes, it goes hand in hand with a question that I got from somebody on the Rocky Point talk on a forum. Uh, they go by the, by the moniker Idlewild. They live in Isla del Mar and they want to know if they can go to Phoenix to check on their house. And then come back 
And okay. like right now, the answer would have to be, you can go check on your house, but I wouldn't count on getting back right now. Not, not for a while. You know, not for a month anyway, I would, I would say. Phase three doesn't kick in until what, Manny? Like June 15th, June 16th? Mid-June, June 15th. Maybe. June 15th? Yeah, yeah so I'm gonna, I, I would say that that sanitary fence is not going to allow anybody in until that point. Agreed. So you can leave. Man, I want to go see my grandkids so bad. I, I want to see my Piper. I want to see my Kelly and my Ryan and my Lee so bad. But I can't. And I know that. And so that's, and I'm not angry about it. I want to you know, do it, but, and it'll, and it'll come. You know, it's the bottom line. Is, I want to go to what you were saying, Kyle. We all have to be, we all have to be unselfish. We have to be patient. We have to do the right thing. And we have to follow the lead of leaders here in Puerto Penasco and respect the guidelines put in place, not for one, but for all, because we are one community. We're not one person. We're right. not one business. And we all have to work together to take care of each other, whatever that means. And if we change business models or lifestyles, this is not forever. This is just for a while. So everybody needs to be patient and take care of each other. Agreed. All right. All right. So uh, Alana Fazio said, I would be happy to check on your 87-year-old parents, uh, whoever asked the question. I am in Las Conchas. Please uh, send me a personal message. So right here in the video forum, just uh, contact her. Um, that's just our community. That's how, that's how we that's all are here. About this, yeah. That's the way it works. So if, you, right. know, if, you have some, if you have a property here and you can't check on it, if you get onto this on, on the Pinasco Fans and Community page, and you ask for someone to check on your property, I'm sure there's somebody here who will step yeah. up and go drive over and check on your property to make sure everything's cool. I, you know? I, 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 I will personally vouch for them. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, for, for the real estate community through the, through the AMPI uh, organization, the real estate organization here, any of the agents that represent AMPI would uh, be happy to check in on uh, their client's home and, and uh, you know, just just do a follow up. Uh, uh, if I could give a plug for 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 Ampi, um, Ampi members uh, came together here. Um, I, I'm for disclosure. I'm the VP of Ethics for 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 Ampi. Um, the uh, Ampi community came together, and I think bought. I think the amount was fifty fifty one. I, I could be wrong. Fifty six. Uh, kind of like these hazmat suits uh, for the essential workers. Uh, the agents came together and, and donated a certain amount of money to be able to uh, purchase these hazmat suits for uh, the essential workers. So um, uh, the, the agents here are going out and doing their part to, to uh, 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 support the, the community. And I'm very, very proud to be part of the organization. That is great, great news. Um, speaking of plugins, there's mine. Everybody <laughs> can visit the Tequila Factory. This, brought, this show is brought to you by the Tequila Factory. Yeah. Um, when, is, when is the Tequila Factory going to be open? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, right now, we're open the weekends and doing the, the curbside. Uh, oh, uh, are you? Thing. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll be first in line then. <laughs> we're yeah, all so just, out of beer. We're all out of beer here in Mexico, you know. I, no, yes. Yeah, I that. <laughs> true. I, that's true. I went shopping today for my my ten day shopping trip, and I asked the I asked the people at Sam's Club. I said, "So when is the next time that beer is going to be available?" Not that I buy my beer at Sam's Club, but they're the biggest thing in town. So I was there getting some stuff, and she says, "Hold on a second. And she goes to the computer and she looks it up. She goes. We haven't got any beer ordered in the future right now. Oh my word! And, and there's none available on any of in any of the Expendios or any of the Oxos or Superlay or Lay Express. It's it. There is no beer. And what happened so, was the production lines shut down. For those that you know don't know what's going on with the beer in Mexico, the actual production lines were shut down. So you've got beer that's sitting there on shelves that's expiring that they've got to pull out, 
and there's no more no, no more beer in in the in the supply line. So it's not going to be like they pull on the tap and suddenly there's beer because mm -hmm. it's going to take a little while for it all to get back into the system. So um, yeah, so they were shut yeah. down. They were shut down as, as a non-essential business. So, wow. so those Can workers, that. they had to go home. <laughs> I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree. <laughs> All I can say is like, more tequila, right, Manny? That's tequila. Chandra, you send me a message just to uh, about to, tequila uh, panasco. Well, Manny's tequila. <laughs> I know. I oh, we got we got the tequila panasco too. I know you do. <laughs> okay, Chandra's telling me that it was forty-two medical coveralls for Mampi. So just oh, that's uh, awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So I'm she's very, confer she's confirming I'm very that. proud of of the organization. That's I've I've committed. Uh, I'd have to say six, six combined years with them. And uh, uh, we really do care about the community and, and working with all of the, uh, the tourism industry and the restaurants and just trying to promote everybody's services. Uh, uh, that's why I'm down here and I'm sure the, the rest of the group feels the same way. We're running out where we went over time a little bit. We're just gonna do the last questions. Uh, one last question for each, uh, Russ. Yeah. What what should tourists or the tour or uh, yeah, what should tourists be aware when coming back to Rocky Point, whenever it happens? What sh should they keep in mind? What should they keep in mind? Mm -hmm. Bring lots of money. <laughs> book your room. Book, book your rooms in advance, mm -hmm. and go around like sailors on leave to every place in town and support them because they're going through this. Yes, they're going through it with, you know, everybody's going through the same thing, but they're going to be here when you come back. And so, you know, throw your, throw your money around a little bit and, and show them some love. That, that's the main thing. I mean, book your, book your rooms early. Cause I think I honestly believe once you can start booking rooms again, I, I think you still can. I don't know when it starts book them, come down, you're gonna have one of the best vacations of your life in a town that you're familiar with, with people that you know that love you. That's what I can say. Good, we wanna keep in mind too that there might be a few changes, um, like uh, the, I think they were gonna put uh, thermometers, like yes. heat, yes. heat, body heat sensors. Body heat thermometers as they cross the border. So is we have to keep in mind that. Or coming in oh, I was talking. I was talking into the future, Manny. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, so let's. No. We'll, we'll go with Russ's. Russ's, yeah, so there, 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 Russ's down there. There's there. definitely. There's. There's going to be. Um. I. You know the term baby steps. There's going to be. Because nobody. Nobody's gone. Nobody in my age group has gone through anything like this. I mean, the financial problem that we had back in 07, 08, 09, That was one thing. I went through that. But we've never gone through something that was a pandemic that affected not just us in Mexico, not just Mexicans, not just Americans, but everybody in the whole world. It affects everybody. So moving forward, as they re as they lift the restrictions at the border, they lift the restrictions coming into Penasco, you're going to see some changes. And you might not understand it completely, but like having your temperature checked. I walked into Sam's today. They checked my temperature. Mm -hmm. And when they, they, they looked at it and they go, oh, you're okay, go on in. Those kind of things are not an intrusion on your freedom. Those kind of things are a fence in your protection of your of your personal health. So, yeah. so maybe we have to redirect how we think about freedoms. It's not just us. It's everybody else that we can affect. So then once you get past the sanitary fence, they take your temperature and you get to town. They then spend money like a sailor on leave. <laughs> there, there you go. That's, a, that's the right answer. Um, Chrissy, I interrupted a question you had for Kyle, and I think it goes with what I wanted to say. Uh, tips for investing in Rocky Point for the for the rest of the year. What, um, what was your the What was your question you had for Kyle? Yeah, my, my, go ahead. No, go ahead, Kyle. Okay. No, no. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry, Chrissy. I interrupted. I'm so sorry I interrupted you. So, uh, tips for investing in Rocky Point this year. What what are what do you recommend? Shop around. Um, I always uh, encourage my clients to uh, 
uh, at least come down and visit uh, a couple of resorts and, and get a feel for the resort. Um, uh, see what they like. This is a, a, a purchase that uh, uh, you and your family are, are going to enjoy and you want to feel comfortable there. Don't be afraid to contact us now. There's, there's uh, many means to contact us and to start looking. Um, if we're talking specifically about what, what we think the, the outlook is uh, within the next six months, I, I, I'm very encouraged. I can still get business done. I can still get business done online. And uh, if I have to, uh, we go shoot videos and send them up to clients, upload them to view YouTube. Like I said, our virtual tours, um, we can still get done. And, and you could probably pick up a, a, you know, a pretty decent deal. Um, we do have some issues right now uh, where uh, some of the uh, city offices are, are not yet open. So, so we're, not, we're not able to uh, uh, get the, the, some of the paperwork that we need to complete the transaction. But our attorneys are working, our notarios are working. Um, uh, and, and so uh, when the time does come when we can register those titles and, and get them transferred, uh, we're going to be ready to go. It doesn't hurt to look online. And, um, and, and as, 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 as Russ said, and, and I think we all said, people are itching to get down. After they've, what they've been through in the States, they want that beach, they want that water. They, they, they want to go on those fishing tours. They want their satisfied frog and they want their maxes and um, you know, whatever it is. They're itching to get down and uh, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to, to, to start planning for it. And I just find that there's so much opportunity down here that uh, uh, I think the way that we have commun started communicating with people is going to change and help us tremendously moving forward. So um, I, I got to put a plug in for myself, rockypointkyle.com. Go for it. No problem. Last question, talking about uh, restaurants and bars. We know there's going to be new guidelines from the government. So mm -hmm. not looking as far to the future, maybe a little bit closer in the next few months, new uh, next year. What would you recommend for people visiting restaurants, bars? What should they be looking for? Well, you know, it's um, real simple. All of the restaurants... Just expect as you walk into a restaurant, there is going to be hand sanitizer by the front door. And as you walk in, you'll be required to use the hand sanitizer. Also, um, in the short future, when they do open up to 40% of the capacity, expect to have limited tables available for the people to dine in. And so that means you better plan ahead. If a restaurant doesn't offer reservations like the frog does, then you're going to need to Call plan, ahead. call ahead or whatever you need to do. Um, but you know, it's, it's going to be refreshing for people to get out and they're going to need to make sure that I, I'm going to go back to sharing the love. What, what, um, Russ said, go when it does open up, go to different places, share that love. Um, try some place you haven't tried try, before. go to a place you don't normally go. You know, we, we want everybody to prosper and make it through this time. And I, th and I think one other thing is that, you know, a lot of, uh, people in the restaurant industry and in the hospitality industry, we're looking for ways to help our employees. So a lot of them have, you know, s ways to donate to their employees or help employees out, but, you know, look for those opportunities to help out too. So going back to your question, um, yes, there's going to be some changes, but I don't think they're going to be too intrusive. I just, you're just going to have to know there's limited tables and you're going to expect hand sanitizer, the tables, the chairs, every surface will be sanitized in between each time it's seated before it's seated again. I mean, it's going to be, we will have somebody at the satisfied frog that all their job is, is to make sure constantly that things are sanitized and that's the way it's going to be. Get to get to like that bleach smell. <laughs> no, the pizza smell is going to cover that. Don't worry. <laughs> um, Can I ask a quick, quick question with with Rick. And, yeah. and, okay. 
Um, are are the uh, are, is the health department going to be making the rounds uh, mm -hmm. how, yeah, more than usual? Uh, in and how does that just briefly so that that the clientele that knows what to expect for, for cleanliness? What what can what what have they told you about that? Well, it's it's kind of been odd because they the health department has hit a couple of the restaurants, you know, and. Um, I know that uh, Latitude 31, they were in that a couple uh, weeks ago and, you know, they passed with flying colors. Mm -hmm. Other restaurants haven't been, you know, checked at all yet. Right. Um, but we know that we all know what we're going to have to do. You know, the, the basic sanitation, you know, protocols are in place. So we already know what we have to do and we've already implemented those. So, you know, it's just going to be a matter of customer realizing that this is be the norm for some time to be there, you know, a table with, with gloves, gloves and, and a mask and, and yep. so you're going to see and you're going to smell restaurants smelling a little bit different because we're going to be hitting it with disinfectants and, and making sure that we're, you know, we're not responsible for passing, you know, any germs along or minimizing the possibility. And and Russ, how's how's that effect, going to affect you as well? You mean, you uh, me? you? no, Russ. Oh. No, Russ. How's that going is, is are you going to be are 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 you going to be uh, um, subject to the same type of sanitation uh, requirements that the restaurants might be, like social distancing and masks? Oh, absolutely. I my my fifteen passenger van. The last time that it ever, that it left my garage was the uh, 16th of March. So I don't have a concern about not doing about doing the actual tours where I have to go. I'm not I'm not interested in that right now. But when we get into when we get into our boat float for uh, September and November, I'm hoping that the the restrictions will be lifted enough to where we can have the people on the boat. I mean, I have, I have 126 people ready to go and jump into the Sea of Cortez in September and off of Echo Fund's boats. I mean, you know, that's that's the thing is that they want to go. And so if we have to do it six feet apart, we're only going to get 20 people on the boat. So that's not going to work very well. But, you know, yeah, it's going to impact us to some degree. Not like it does for a restaurant. I My... my uh, I don't have day-to-day -day business that gets impacted by what's going on. I can evolve my business around what's going on and, and modify it. So, you know, I, I don't want to stress out. I'm going to do my part. I'm not going to buy a condo from you right now, but I am going to buy chicken from the frog. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm going to buy some tequila from Manny's, but, you know, and we're, going to, and we're going to go around and do our part in doing that. But for our business, because it's, it really is about numbers. How if there's a thousand people here, I might get to see ten people in a week, right? That's that's my business. If so, it goes away, if it goes away for a while, I think that we're okay in that way. We we have enough things going on that we can we can we can manage and modify what we're doing. We're going to end the the program right here. We want to thank uh, Rick and Chris Nichols. We want to thank Kyle Wood and Russ Black. Thank you guys for accepting my invitation. Thank you everybody that's listening to us. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, links are in the video. I will post some more information also. Please visit uh, Steps of Love also and donate however you can. As you can see, we're a small community. We all love each other. We all uh, want Penasco back open and uh, we're just, we're doing what we can right now. Thank you for listening and thank, thank you, you guys for for having for uh, being in the show. Thanks, Manny. So, thank, thank you for man. the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. So Bye -bye. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop live streaming here. <laughs>